Well, of all the movies I thought would be one of the smarter ones of the year, I didn't think it'd be Barbie. Okay. Hi, everyone. So we're uh, we're back again with the latest batch of reviews. Just a reminder for those who kind of pop in on our channel, this year has been a mess, to put it lightly. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just seeing a bunch of movies throughout the weeks, and then I'm recording reviews in chunks. Um, so that way I can just upload them in various bits. So uploading schedules can be inconsistent for a while until things eventually settle down or get to a better rhythm. But for now, this is how we're doing it. Please be patient. If there's anything in particular you want me to review, let me know in the comments. I'll rent it. I don't care at this point. So on that note, let's talk about one of the biggest, like biggest surprise hits of the year. Um, not surprising that it was a hit, but surprised by how much of a hit. Cause this thing is, has already made over a billion dollars. Um, in less than three the, weeks. The marketing strategy was pretty brilliant. Uh, it's, I don't think it's just the marketing strategy. I think it's because it just genuinely is a great fucking movie. It is. Um, and I knew I was fascinated by the project that by the minute they announced that Greta Gerwig was going to direct it. Um, I know I was instantly intrigued. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't know what this is going to be, but it's going to be fascinating. <laughs> yes. And I was right. Granted, it's not exactly a hard prediction to make if you're familiar with Greta Gerwig's work. Um, but, uh, you knew it was good, but it, this, what we got was a very deliberately absurdist, uh, satire. Um, a lot of which is not told in the trailers. The trailer does a good job of not really telling you what the movie is about. Um, how much trailer should be. Um, and we'll get, we'll talk about that when we get into spoilers. So let's try to avoid that topic for the time being. Um, cause there's a lot to unpack in that second half of the film. Um, but just as is, this movie is kind of fucking brilliant. Um, and to, and deeply philosophical about the modern societal issues. Um, yeah, no, it, it definitely is. I think it's definitely a case of it's an examination of the patriarchy. Um, I don't like not necessarily through a non judgmental lens, but a very nuanced lens. Um, that is also very keen to point out, like, hey, a lot of these problems that we like to pretend we're past because it's easier to believe it is, we're not fucking past it. <laughs> no. Um, and sometimes you just need to acknowledge that's the case because it's not going to get better if you don't. Um, and obviously there's more nuance to that uh, to that uh, message, and I can't really get into that without going to spoilers, so I'm going to wait a little bit on that. That being said, this movie's made over a billion dollars. You've probably seen it already. Um, but that being said, let's break it down a little bit. Um, so the performances, the set, the set design, the performances, incredible. the writing are all incredible. Um, and like, I don't think any of them are digital. Um, there probably is some digital stuff in there. Where it's, it's one of the you just probably just can't notice it. Um, like Margot Robbie is great. Uh, Ryan Gosling, like casting. Uh, Ryan Gosling got so into the role, I think it broke his brain a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen him on if you've seen him on the interview uh, circuit before the strike started um like it happened. He, I, I i tried to go into this as blind as possible yeah it, it, it is i think it kind of i do legitimately think it kind of melted his brain he has become one with ken and he'll be the first one to say that uh, <laughs> <laughs> um and, and again it's well, he's just up. ken <laughs> kind of a fascinating, uh, fascinating way, and I, I always said, right, I said since the Nice Guys that Ryan Gosling is a much better comedic actor than he is a serious actor. Yes. Um, if you, uh, with the exception of like Blade Runner twenty forty nine, he was great in that film. Yes, uh, he was. But uh, this is a case where he really gets to just, just explore and do whatever he wants. He's given a lot of free reign just to try stuff and see where it goes. Um, there's a lot of incredibly smart um commentary particularly when you get into the real world. I like the chemistry, like everyone has such great chemistry with each other. The message was strong on point. The script is incredibly sharp. Yes. Um, and it relies on the kind of satire I think works the best, which is again, absurdism, um, where you highlight, again, you put this in, in the framing of the real world and make it as crazy and ridiculous as possible to highlight, hey, the shit that we're talking about is really just as ridiculous when you actually stop and think about it. Um, the comparison I made to uh, someone else I was talking about was like Blazing Saddles. I love uh, that movie too. Yeah, but I think it runs in a very similar vein where it's like, hey, when you actually break it down, the people that are making the racism remarks or people that run racism are a bunch of fucking stupid morons. Um, 
And in the same kind of way, uh, the, the, the way they describe the patriarchy, again, I'm not going to spoilers, is also that, hey, most of this is perpetuated by stupid fucking morons. Um, and it doesn't help anyone. Um, but again, we'll get into that. It doesn't really make, make anyone happy or or balanced or sa- completely satisfied. No, it doesn't. Um, so for those who, for, if again, if you've been living in Iraq, you have no idea who Louis Barbie is. <laughs> it's a brief rundown of the plot is that Margot Raleigh plays, what was, what was the... Stereotypical uh, Barbie. Stereotypical Barbie, thank you. Um, who is exactly what she sounds like. She's a stereotypical Barbie. She lives in Barbie land, which where this place is ruled by women. And everything is prosperous. Everyone's happy. Everyone's having, like, every, just a party every day. Every day is perfect. Until Margot Robbie starts experiencing some changes that are a little too reflective of the real world. Um... So she goes to the Kate McKinnon Barbie because I can't remember her character's name. Weird uh, Barbie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the weird Barbie who has like crayon drawn on her face and just overall just kind of broken and weird because by Barbie been, standards. Because she's been played with too roughly. Yes. Um, the movie doesn't really quite make, make it clear how the rules between the Barbie land and the real world work, but also kind of says, hey, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> like it just. It's kind of one of those, hey, it's just a movie. I should really just relax kind of things. Yes. Um, and she basically says that, uh, hey, like just, there's someone's messing with you in the real world. You got to go find them and figure out what's going on. So she goes to the real world very reluctantly. And uh, from there, it's hard to go talk about without going to spoiler territory. But other than that, wacky shenanigans happen. She ends up taking on the patriarchy and blah, blah, I blah, think blah. So too. Uh, well, yeah, Ken uh, Ken joins her there too, and I immediately like the juxtaposition um, that uh, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling have when they enter the real world. And Ryan Gosling's immediately like walks into this very masculine world, this very stereotypical masculine world. So it's going like, man, I feel like powerful and like enti- <laughs> like uh, accepted here. And Margot Robbie's like, I feel scared and intimidated. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, and. The CEO of Mattel finds out that Barbie's on the loose. He tries to like get her back, which also leads to a very funny exchange. Which I was very much like, okay, yeah, this is where like this movie's already smart, but this scene made me laugh. Was uh, very much in Margot Robbie goes to meet the CEOs, and she notes that there's no women in this in the boardroom at all. Um, and then Will Ferrell has this big lawn. Will Ferrell plays the CEO has this big lawn uh, like justification where he's talking about like you know we had a CEO like in 1990, so. That was one. Um, and there was oh, another we, at we some have, point. We have all ki- kinds of women CEOs. We love women here. But the, the part that got me was when he just stops and he goes, you know, some of my friends are Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of like, I am surprised Mattel let them get away with that joke. Uh, <laughs> but it's a great fucking joke. Um it is. But uh, that that's kind of like okay, yeah. There's 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 the Jamie Lee brilliant uh mind behind this film. Um, I know I've heard like talked to some people I know, and they said they like I guess Mattel may have, like maybe subdued a lot of things from the original script, but from everything I've read, it seems like every time the Mattel things like hey maybe you should try this, the response was you should be so fucking lucky that Greta Gerwig is even doing this fucking movie. <laughs> so. Um, apparently this this movie has has quite the production backstory it, it, it was quite an ordeal uh and a long time for us to get what it ended up being with with the the crew that that ended up making it yeah it was originally supposed to be an amy schumer uh, uh movie that yes uh, no, um, she she was going to play stereotypical barbie and, um but the script and is it was going to be written and directed by other people like a few different incarnations um yeah so like the, the script was very different the pitch was entirely different it wasn't too Greta Gerwig signed on that it, it became what it like it even started to take any form at all yes. um but um anyway um oh, I had a thought and I lost it oh yeah so this I guess we we can't really talk about anything else between again to spoilers so um because again it's, uh, it's, can can I I, I yes. mention the the soundtrack oh yes please do as uh, so towards the beginning of uh, this this doesn't give away any spoilers that um uh there's a disco party at at Barbie lands and when they're 
they're dancing. I I was grooving in mm. in my seat. I I I looked up that that song on YouTube. It's uh by Dua Lipa. I've been listening to it basically since seeing the movie. Uh, like this. If you like dance tracks, this the soundtrack slaps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty catchy soundtrack. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we should probably get into spoilers now. Uh, but yeah, one of the best films of the year. Brilliant stuff. Yes. Um, one of the best satires I've seen in a long time. So definitely, if you haven't seen it already, go see it. Fantastic film. It deserves all the money it's made. Um, so yeah, spoilers um, from here on out. So three, two, one. Okay, uh, let's get into the nitty gritty here because um, the examination of patriarchy here is deeply fascinating fascinating kind of hilarious um so of course all of the chuds online immediately misinterpreted this deliberately um and uh like got got it, there's a huge hate boner from the the predictable crowds online about I, this movie i um, think uh bill, bill maher posted something about how uh it, it has a man-hating message Yes, because Bill Maher, like many other people like him, are media liter- immediate illiterate and can't actually de- develop nuance. It's not even that nuance because the movie tells you to your fucking face what it's about. And people still misinterpreted it because it's easier to misinterpret it so you can hate something than actually understand the message and do something about it. Um, and, and even stereotypical Barbie, Margot Robbie's character, doesn't want to hurt Ken. Well, the thing he- is, like, the problem isn't Ken. That's the whole point of the movie. And I know you know this. Um... I'm just explaining it for people at home. Um, so, uh, like, so, but like, the whole point of the movie is uh, while Ken is in the real world, he basically discovers that men rule, uh, men rule the world in the real life, and he thinks that's awesome. Um, but he tries to like take parent direct for himself, but he's not working because systems are in place that he can't just do whatever he wants. So he decides like, I need a place without patriarchy so I can introduce patriarchy. So he does it in Barbie Land. Um, and uh, fills up with all the stereotypical patriarchal things that are in there. Uh, the part that hit a little too close to home was when I think the Barbie said, uh, like, in, like, in order to distract the man, ask, tell him you've never seen The Godfather and ask him to explain it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can can you start it over and, and explain it to, to me through, through the whole thing? I was kind of like, all right, called out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a fair hit. That's a fair hit. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Also, uh, Ryan Gosling's uh, Ken when when he's in in the real world uh, discovers horses because he sees some Los Angeles police riding horses, and uh, in addition to becoming enthusiastic about the patriarchy. He also becomes enthusiastic about horses. And he also seems to think the two are connected somehow. So he has this really warped idea of what patriarchy is, um, (laughs) but understands it enough to implement it correctly uh, (laughs) with horses. Um, So yeah, by the time Margot Robbie returns to Barbie land with the, with the older adult that kind of accidentally created her uh, existential crisis and uh, that character's daughter, um, the who's Atlantis... a, a, a typical tween that 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 doesn't uh, that that is too cool for for Barbies? Yes, and just straight up calls Barbie a fascist, which I thought was funny. Uh, yes. <laughs> um. So, and also just very funny to hear the word fascist come out of a Barbie movie. Um. But anyway, so uh, yeah, Ken has ter- turned Barbie land to a stereotypical uh like Ken land now. So all the women are like scantily clad, like only there to serve the men. Um and just yeah, all the men are in charge. You know, like drinking beers or just drinking Bringing all these them, things. Them brewski beers. Yeah, brewski beers. And the whole point of the movie eventually boils down to is that at the end of the day, Ken doesn't even really want this. He's get he got tired of it very quickly, but by then he was already so committed to it that he couldn't let it go. <laughs> um, and the entire point of the movie is that patriarchy is bad for everyone especially men as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I mean, not especially as there are, but also it also hurts men in general. The problem is not because it, it limits them also. Yes, exactly. It puts, it puts everyone in a box that they can't escape from uh, literally or figuratively in this film. Uh, 
And that's the point. The fact that so many people miss that when they make it very explicit, that's the that's the point of the film um, is it's not bad. You, your, your sound stops. Hold up. Okay. There we go. Okay. Back to what I was saying. Um, so yeah, like, so, and it's not surprising that it, internet morons like developed a, like a hard on hater boner for this movie. Um, but it's more just like, guys, give it a fucking break. <laughs> like for five fucking minutes, will you all shut the fuck up? <laughs> um, because the, the, that's one thing I'm very glad for this movie's success is the fact that it's very much just be like, no, 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 these idiots are wrong. And they deserve to be wrong and hide in their shame corner. <laughs> um, and we're outgrowing these ideas. Or at least you hope we are. Um, I, miss, I pray we are. I hope so. I really do. Like, But like, it's more like we're just... I. It's a hopeful rejection of these hateful ideas. That this is like men... The like idea of like men are better. That kind of patriarchal, sexist uh, way of thinking. Is slowly starting to die out. Even though it's not happening nearly fast enough. Um, but... Anyway, all that's to say is that the message here is not anti-men. The message is anti-patriarchy. Um, that the idea is that there is a massive societal problem, not just in ha- not just with women, but also men as well. Um, that's not to say one is greater than the other, or the one is worse than the other. Both are problems that exist and need to be addressed. <laughs> um, now, it is undisputable, and this movie, a point that Mara brings out too, that men in this dynamic still have more power over women. That is indisputable. Um, that being said, um, it also like as you mentioned now, like it, like it that doesn't mean it's still not very limiting for men as well in the system that currently exists. <laughs> um, and I think that's the movie is trying to get at. Um, but I'm doing all the talking. You say words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, but um. That is the one of uh, of the core messages or the crux of the the satire. Uh, you articulated that better than than I can right now. I kind of want to talk about the smaller uh, aspects of the the movie. If, so um, I I think. I think um, the character's name who accidentally gave, gave stereotypical Barbie her existential crisis. I think that character's name was Melissa. Um, sure. I'm I might be be wrong about that, but anywho, uh, she was played by America Ferreira, who yeah. uh, you may or may not know from the 2000s uh, series Ugly Betty. Never saw it. Okay. Um, it's it's on various streaming services if you ever want to. It's it, it's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hadn't seen her since uh, watching the uh, uh, the DVDs from um, from the library of of Ugly Betty, and she is fantastic in this mm-hmm. movie. She, she has a a monologue. Um, I'd say tor- towards the end of, of the second act, uh, that uh, maybe the beginning of the third, that kind of um, jump starts the the Barbie lands revolution to overthrow the the newly found patriarchy, yeah. and she says a lot in in that like three five minute monologue that many women can't. And understand and and relate to and the passion and articulation that she delivers it in is fantastic. Yes. I, I I I was very happy to to see America Ferreira have a piece of material that that she could sink her teeth into in Absolutely. this film. Yep, that was incredibly valid. Uh, uh, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I really liked that. I. Uh, I thought similarly Helen Mirren as as the narrator was fantastic casting uh, as 
as well. I think she had had some of the the funniest lines. I think pro- probably uh, one of my my favorite jokes that in the movie that is not uh, Ken related mm-hmm. was uh, when uh, Margot Robbie's stereotypical Barbie uh, it is feeling her lowest point and call- calling herself ugly. Uh, uh, you hear Helen Mirren's narration <laughs> okay, uh, break the, the fourth wall and say, no to the, the filmmakers, if, if you really want to make this, this point, don't cast Margot Robbie. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought that was great. That made me, I got a big laugh out of me, too. Uh, I was thinking about, I was actually going to bring that up if you didn't. Uh. One of the most stereotypical, uh, which is fitting since she played stereotypical Barbie, one, one of the most stereotypically beautiful women on, on film of her generation. <laughs> and she and her character is saying, I'm old and ugly. <laughs> note to, note to the director margot robbie is not as like uh, not margot robbie is not the right person to direct a uh, cast if you want to make this point <laughs> yes <laughs> so. very funny um but i actually on that note it actually does transition well to another message of the film which is like beauty is in the eye of the beholder pretty much um which is there is no like there isn't or at least shouldn't be any particular standard of beauty you're like you're beautiful regardless of like your circumstances and i think the scene that uh, I guess uh, Greta Gerwig had a fight to keep in the film. Uh, it's oh. a small little scene, but I loved it. And I thought it was very wholesome. It was when uh, Barbie goes into the real world for the first time. And she sits, she sits like on a bus stop. Uh, I love that that scene too. And uh, she turns to see like this little old lady just so sitting over there. And she sits like, Margot, I just kind of sit there. It's kind of just t- at, in awe of this older woman. And just kind of like, you are beautiful. And just like, it's very wholesome beautiful moment um, very, heartwarming. very heartwarming and again really drives home the fact that um beauty doesn't have a standard or an age it can be anyone at any time for any reason uh beauty isn't even about physical looks it's about like like again at the risk of sounding uh cliche uh make, it comes from the heart it comes from the soul it comes from what makes us all human um and not the superficial was- stuff that divides us mm. Yes, uh, and uh, that that was another one of my favorite scenes as well. It's very fleeting, but but I I, I found it to be subtly impactful. Like you can uh, cut it and not miss anything in the film, but the the inclusion of it does add another layer to it that is very very fascinating and very heartwarming. Yes, and I I forgot to, but I had had meant to to research uh, the. Uh, who that elderly woman was? I I briefly theorized in, in my in my screening uh, that oh maybe that's the the girl that that Barbie is named after. Uh, I, I don't even know if she's still alive. I don't think or so. Not. Or, or 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 maybe it it was just an older actress. Uh, I I don't know. I think it was just an older actress. Uh, okay. I don't think it was a glorified cameo. I don't think it was anything like that. I think it was just an older actress um, that they brought on for that scene. Um, which I think it makes it stronger, honestly, if that is the case. Yeah. Um, and- because uh, uh, in in Hollywood and in society at, at large, uh, it there aren't enough older women filling jobs yeah. in in my opinion i'm not trying to sound overly political this is just an observation i think we're past that point at this point uh sarah <laughs> <laughs> this is a very political review and that's just unavoidable and it should we shouldn't be afraid of that um because everyone's people like oh too woke or something like, you can get the fuck off my channel i don't care i will bonk you i don't give a shit <laughs> i don't need it i don't have anything to prove to you get the fuck out um uh, <laughs> Granted, if you made it this far into the video just to hear me say that, then you already have problems. Uh, <laughs> that means you hate kids. watch this for 20 minutes. <laughs> for, <laughs> to get to the point where I tell it, I say, fuck you. Uh, but anyway, um, I, had, I was going to say something, but I can't remember what it is now. It's something that had to do with uh, the Kens. Um, oh, is it there? 
uh, their their boy band slash Gene Kelly style uh, song and dance number. It might have been, but I'm going to talk about it now since you brought it up because it is an amazing sequence. It is. Uh, and I, Ryan it... Gos- and like, I give Ryan Gosling shit for La La Land because he was barely trying to sing in that movie. <laughs> um, and he wasn't very good at it, but this one just kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere. It's like, Jesus Christ, where was that hiding? Um, and the funny part is... And it- he, he also does a... a- convincing cover of matchbox 20s uh uh push you around i haven't heard that one so i can't speak to it uh oh uh it's it it's the the song he's covering when when he's playing the guitar oh, right. yeah, yeah 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 on okay. on beach um and it is it is funny though because if you listen to uh, ryan gosling review uh not reviews interviews about that song uh the i'm just ken song is mm-hmm. uh like he basically's like, oh, I didn't sing that. That was Ken. That just that was Ken channeling me. <laughs> this, like I said, I think playing Ken kind of broke his brain a little bit. Uh, <laughs> he went to method. Uh, but oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Um, a few things about that I think is really appreciated. These are small details I didn't find out till after I saw the movie, but I really liked them in hindsight. I think it makes the film better. Is the fact that there is a trans actress playing one of the Barbies. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, I saw for like on, on trans Twitter a little bit. Um, someone just said like, you know, it is ve- it is extremely refreshing, even though it's like meant to highlight a patriarchal cliche. It is just really refreshing for a man to like uh, like approach a trans woman and to say she is like she is objectively beautiful, um, yes. with like no irony or no punchline or anything like that, uh, like or just any like insincerity to it. Like just literally, like hey, like. Like, let me take those glasses off. Look at you. Now you're beautiful. <laughs> um, so like that was just a nice little touch. I appreciate it in hindsight, even though it was like there was a joke in there, it wasn't at her expense, which I appreciate. Mm. Um, and the other thing I also want to highlight too is also a, I appreciate also that it again going back to the patriarchal ideas, um, that it definitely highlights that um not just Barbie doesn't need anyone to support them, but neither does Ken. Um, and then which is Ryan Gosling, like the culmination of Ken's arc through the film is the fact that as much as, you know, Barbie wants to be around woman, a woman, she doesn't, she wants to find her own way. Ken has the right to do the same. Um, yes. And I, as, as somebody who, um, has, has spent the, um, a fair amount of my slightly younger life doing introspective in search of my authentic self i liked that that um stereotypical barbie's encouragement and message to to ryan gosling's ken towards the end it is you you need to discover who you are without me yeah on and, your own terms mm. yes and, and encouraging him that 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 he is a worthwhile person a worthwhile individual who uh who would benefit from discovering his authentic self absolutely um but yeah i think those are all the points it's a very healthy message absolutely okay now i think i've heard everything i wanted to say was there anything else you wanted to cover that we haven't talked about already um we've we've covered most of of what i wanted to to mention i i did think that uh ryan gosling's line towards the end about how when he he discovered that that the patriarchy wasn't so much about horses then he wanted to to do it less <laughs> i thought i thought that was was funny and cute it's like okay uh uh become a, a horse ranch <laughs> maybe he will I mean, maybe, maybe that'll be in the sequel uh <laughs> yeah um so i liked that um there are so many aspects of of this of this movie that I could I could list and just sound so repetitive saying oh I like that I appreciate that that's yeah. great uh uh the the costumes and color palette and um and and the contrast in in worlds are are outstanding uh, um this is a minor nitpick and I and I know this choice must have been intentional, but the uh, the supreme stupidity 
displayed by the Mattel executives uh, what was a little annoying to me at times. That's fair. Uh, I, I definitely get that. Um, I'm wondering if there is an earlier draft movie movie that was harder on the uh, board that had to be softened uh, and just make them stupid as instead of spiteful. I have no evidence of that, to be clear. Uh, that is purely speculation. Um, but yeah, I, I get what you mean. Like, uh, I, I thought it was funny, but that being said, Will Ferrell style comedy can grate on you after a little bit. Um, yes. So I, I was grateful that, um, uh, his, his character was a background supporting character. Although I did thought it was funny that they all freaked out at pregnant Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we discontinued that. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently all the, Barbies featured were actual Barbies that yep. Mattel has has released at some point or another. Yep, even the Michael Sarah one. Um, Alan. Yep, that's a real oh, one. Oh yes, and uh, thank you for, for for mentioning that. That the uh, reminds me of uh, um, another theme that stuck out to me that uh, that uh, was was great. Uh, was when he um he was trying to escape the uh, Kendom land mm-hmm. um and, and and said if I have, have to sit on another leather couch <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he um my my partner thinks that that this was a, a Scott Pilgrim reference but, uh then then he 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 beats up the uh, the the Kendall construction workers who are trying to build the the barrier between Kendom land and and the real world. So I can see I, you make that I, argument. I don't really see it personally, but I can see how you can make that argument. I, I I thought that whether it was or not that it was a fun scene that uh, he suddenly becomes more assertive and and says, "Keep the car singing." I'll. I'll I'll handle this. <laughs> um, yeah. um. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, that's that's most of it. As I said, I could. Yeah, we could go all day about like individual. Yes. Uh, it, it it's 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 a fantastic, smart, colorful, philosophical film. And uh, if you haven't, on the off chance you haven't seen it yet, we both recommend it. Yep. Great film. Probably gonna be my, probably one of the best of the year. Um, really, really loved it. Uh, right, excited to see whatever Gre- Greta Gerwig does next. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic film. And if you're one of the people that think that's man hating, then you're either deliberately obtuse or you're just fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'll end on that note with active aggression, just like a man. Bye. <laughs>